Good morning, everyone. This is Harry from Huangshan City of China. Thank you for dropping by. It's great to see you again. It's great to meet you. Meet yourselves again. I'm now sitting in my house in rural China. This is actually my wife's family's house. Hello, Laurie. There may be some background white noise. That is actually from a stream that runs under our house. It has rained for a couple of days. You may hear that the gurgling stream. And you know, the, today's topic is about the Chinese uh, propaganda poster art. I'm going to demonstrate through this book right in front of me. This is a catalog with many posters in it. I got this book a few years ago when I was in Shanghai. And then in the French concession part of Shanghai, a historical area of Shanghai with uh, the French influence, which was also very popular with uh, both Chinese and foreign tourists. There was, or well, there is still this museum called the Propaganda Poster Art Center. Maybe it comes as a surprise for you to know the fact that there is a museum in the topic of uh, propaganda in China. But actually that museum is a private one, a small one. It's not a museum in a proper building. It is actually a museum in a private house, in a private uh, apartment, on the basements in the French concession of Shanghai. But that museum, I think has been very successful and a lot of uh, mainly foreign tourists, as I know, went there to visit. So I got this book from the owner or the curator of that museum, actually the owner of that uh, yeah, business. And Shanghainese man, and uh, he just gave this book to me for free. And I think this is a good material for us to learn a special aspect of uh, China. And if you don't mind, let me just uh, keep this uh, background music on. Because this topic is a bit serious. <laughs> but I think, you know what, actually, I believe uh, the harder, the better. But anyway, let's have some music on to just uh, make it uh, lighter. And you know what, last time <clears throat> I did another tour from home and it, it was about this. <clears throat> Chinese uh, cricket fighting culture. I put some videos together into one, which I thought uh, was a good reflection of uh, Chinese uh, cricket fighting culture. You know, in China, the cricket uh, in the land of China can fight each other. It's a very popular game among the folks and also a gambling trade in China, which is uh, still very popular today, but uh, it's not something you get to see very easily. Usually it goes uh, like uh, privately. And uh, so I think I'm going to come back to this topic again in near future, because uh, this time I'm going to also share a lot of uh, stories from this book. In addition to the videos, actually, you know what? Uh, after the last tour of the cooked fighting, I gave the video, which was maybe one hour, or an English translation, which I made. 
So it's actually now available on YouTube. And uh, but next, I'm going to make another tour with that video with all the English uh, caption and also the stories that shared from this book. There are a lot of interesting stories from this book about、uh, how people, you know, have gone about、uh, the quick fighting business or culture. All right, so let's now move on to this one. First of all, it's the first period of the story that is 1949 and 1953. Of course, China was liberated by the Communist Party in 1949. This is、uh, the so-called New China. Before that, China was a republic. Between 1912 and 1949, let's say. And even before that, China actually was in a long process of、uh, over two thousand year imperial system. And here we're going to see some posters in this period of the time, nineteen forty nine to nineteen fifty three. Let me read what it says here. During these exciting times of、uh, fundamental change, artists were encouraged to celebrate the birth of a new China, and many produced richly imaginative works, showing happy and glorious times ahead. Many of these artists were from the liberation area, and had already produced poster art <clears throat> supporting the anti-Japanese war. And the crusade for liberation, woodcut style, okay, woodcut style, used to be known as the revolutionary art. Other artists had returned from Europe, bringing insights into modern Western art with them. Obviously, artists had more freedom in their artistic creation during this time. Most of the propaganda posters produced during this period of the time were printed by privately owned plants in Shanghai. Did I miss much, Katie? No, Katie. We're just the beginning. This is the first page of the book. I'm going to tell the stories today on this book. So now let's go to the first poster here. It was created in the year 1952. The name of the poster is、uh, "Fight Against、uh, Illegal Business People Who Destroy Countries'、uh, Construction." You can see here in this、uh, image, Chairman Mao is、uh, standing. As、uh, the main part of the background, and there were a lot of、uh, workers, farmers, and some intellectuals and、uh, soldiers, which are the four main forces of Chinese、uh, proletariat. You know, on Chinese national flag, there are five stars. The major star in the middle represents the leadership of、uh, the Communist Party. Well, the other four stars, they are what I just、uh, told you: the intellectuals, workers, farmers, and the soldiers. So they are all pointing at their fingers at、uh, this man, who is a、uh, an illegal merchant that is、uh, associated with、uh, capitalism. So there was a movement in China then, right after 1949. To be against uh, the capitalist uh, merchants. So here in this bag, it says on this bag it says、uh, the theft of a state treasury. Yeah. So you know what? Actually, each poster comes with actually a movement. There were a lot of movements. Traditional characters, yeah, Chinese、uh, traditional characters, and、uh, there is also on internet. 
the website of that museum I mentioned earlier. That is、uh, the Propaganda Post Art Center. You can search on the internet and easily find it. Propaganda Post Art Center, Shanghai. All right. On this page, there is another one. So you know what? This is actually interesting because、uh, Chinese people actually they do have a habit, which is reflected、uh, through this image. You know, that is、uh, they like to always、uh, point their fingers at a meeting, at、uh, maybe sometimes uh, just uh, you know the random、uh, interaction with people. Yeah. All right. Here, the second、uh, image is a grand celebration for the founding of People's Republic of China, 1950. Of course, the founding ceremony of New China was held in October. Be exactly October the first, 1949. So October the first is the Chinese National Day. But this poster was created、uh, a little after that. People marched uh, past uh, the Tiananmen Square. Actually, the Tiananmen Square. This is the main gate where you can see the portrait of Chairman Mao, and behind is actually the Forbidden City, the former Ming and Qing Dynasty Imperial Palace. Isn't it、uh, impolite to point, uh, John? I would say, in most cases, yes. In most cases, especially when you are in the interaction with the people, that's for sure. Yeah. Okay. Tiananmen Square, and、uh, here is the. Here are the Chinese characters on it. The one on the left still has the characters that you can see today. That is a、uh, long live. The People's Republic of China, but today the characters on the right side are different, different from what、uh, you see here in this poster, which was what it was in 1950. All right, different. Here it says、uh, the Central People's Government, long live the Central People's Government. But today, what you see is、uh, long live. The great union of the people over the world is different. I think today, through this book, it's also a very good,、uh, you know, refreshment of a Chinese、uh, near modern history or modern history. It's quite modern. It depends on what standard you take. Okay. Here is、uh, another poster on the second page, and this is a parade to celebrate May Day. In China, May the first is the Labor Day, so this is actually the celebration on the Labor Day, and it is still the Labor Day today on May the first. I wonder if、uh, there is a Labor Day in your country, and is it if there is any? Is it on May the first? I'm curious. Let me know. Oh yes, yes. Okay, good. International Labor Day, but Xin Xin, I think you are from Singapore. Yeah, but so what about other countries in different parts of the world? River, yes. Okay, I am September the first is your Labor Day. Yes, in Lebanon. All right, Mary, you are in Lebanon. In Lebanon, or、oh, in Lebanon, it is、uh, on May the first. All right. So you can see here this parade uh, actually. Uh, Takes place、uh, in Shanghai. You can see the architecture in British style along the Huangpu River. This is Shanghai, and this place is called the Bund, the most uh, famous uh, spot in Shanghai for international tourists and also for Chinese tourists. When they go to Shanghai, they always like to walk along the, the Nanjing Road all the way to the end. 
where they can get to the junction of uh, the Bund with the Huangpu River. This is actually a row of architectures built by, uh, by the British in the British time, colonial time, along the Huangpu River. Huangpu River is the last uh, branch of the Yangtze River before the Yangtze empties into itself into the East China Sea, by the way. Okay, there are more here. What's next? This one says, presenting flowers to Chairman Mao. Created in the year 1951. Here, this boy wears a, a red scarf around the neck. This is uh, still what kids today do in school. Usually when they are in grade three, they start to wear this uh, red scarf. Yes, and uh, this is also what I did as a student. In the first grade and in the second grade, children, they also wear a kind of a scarf, but it's in green. And that green scarf has a uh, round edges. So when you tie it in front, you actually get a shape of uh, sprouts. That signifies uh, you are just a growing child, like a sprout. But when you are in grade three, usually it changes to this uh, red scarf with the uh, pointed angles, pointed angles. So when you tie it in the front, you get, instead of a sprout, you get um, uh, like, um, I don't know, just something pointy and hang in front of you because uh, it's a scarf of, uh, you know, four corners. So when you, yeah, no run edges. Like flames something. Can you show the front cover of the book? Okay, Katie. This is the book called Chinese uh, Propaganda Poster. I got this book from a private museum run by a Shanghainese uh, man, probably in his uh, 60s or 70s. A few years ago in uh, his museum called the Propaganda Post Arts Center. It's on the basement in a condominium building in the French concession part of Shanghai. All right, let's move on. And uh, what's here? This was created in 1951. It says uh, under a new China under leadership of a uh, wise Chairman Mao. 1951. China was in the Korean War. So you can see these. Of course, you always see those important uh, components of people in different uh, posters. Again, they are soldiers, farmers, workers, and the specific uh, intellectuals. And here you can see hands of China and the Soviet Union being shaken. And there is a, a deal being signed by the two parties. And Chairman Mao here, Joseph Stalin here. What is the person on right rear holding on a pillow? <laughs> Okay, it's a farmer uh, holding some products, you know, because uh, they are farmers. It's actually not a pillow. It's actually, you know what? It's uh, actually a pack of uh, grain, a pack of grain, all right? And this is a, uh, there's also another bag in blue, and this is typical Chinese uh, nanking pattern of uh, cloth created uh, by farmers. 
And on the left, there is a, a representative of uh, workers also, you know, taking out uh, maybe, you know, some uh, industrial products as uh, the result of their work to present, to be presented to the wise Chairman Mao. All right. Did Chinese people learn about Stalin's uh, purges? <laughs> KM, uh, what do you think? Purge, uh, of course, no. It's not that word people will get to know here. All right. What's here? Build modern defense under Chairman Mao's leadership for peace in East and the world. Hmm. This was created in the year 1952. You know, the Korean War finished uh, in 1953. The war then was uh, still going on. And here it mentions the uh, East. Yes, China is in the East. And uh, there is a famous song in China that is directly associated with Chairman Mao. And uh, the name of the song is uh, the East is Red. The East is Red. And uh, in the lyrics of that song, there's uh, the mention of Chairman Mao a few times. It says something like, uh, the East is red, the sun rises, the East begets a great man called Mao Zedong. This is how the, the song starts with lyrics. Yeah, a few sentences just to share with you. Were these uh, mass produced and distributed across the country? Uh, not mass produced, uh, you know, uh, distributed across the country, because I would say that uh, most people are not uh, interested in that. Or they are not interested in for one reason or another. And as I told you, uh, that museum, the Propaganda Post Art Center in Shanghai, it runs in public. But when I say in public, it means that people can just uh, go to visit, if you know. And, uh, but on the other hand, it's on the basement in a private uh, condominium building. All right. And uh, as I know, most people who go there to visit are Westerners, expatriates, or a few Chinese people who are just interested in that. You don't get to see a lot of Chinese people, no. So for one reason or another. All right, let's move on here. Uh, this is what says in Chinese, and it means in English, build new China with a soul and a heart. Look at the poster of this man standing in the middle. A walker. This one was created in 1951, says a labor hero family welcomes the year of victory with the title of uh, Army Support Model Family. Yeah, there are a lot of uh, models in China and promoted in public and people are encouraged to learn from. These are the models. Yeah, so like this one in the middle, is a very popular model, and uh, he is uh, surrounded by kids. And the kids are, are very excited. They play drums, they sing, dance, and do things. Uh, just so very happy around this uh, exemplary soldier. And actually, this image of the soldier reminds me of uh, the most, uh, probably the most famous uh, model soldier in China called Lei Feng. Lei Feng is... Uh, the most famous image in China, known for his uh, selfless spirit. As a soldier, he just uh, does 
things for the people in a selfless manner. So selfless that、uh, there's no himself in his life as if. All right, something like this. So. All right, next. This one it says, "A labor hero is most、uh, glorious."、Mm. I'm more interested in the image created in this、uh, poster about all those kids. Just look at their faces; they look so mature, <laughs> so mature.、Uh, And actually, in this kind of a poster images, you don't see the normal techniques an art school student learns in an academy. It's just a very basic, rough, very colorful, very noisy kind of a style, and、uh, just a—it's kind of just a—you know—you just make everything together. Here it says glory, Guangrong glory. <laughs> Fat, too prosperous. <laughs> okay. All right. Now we are still in the first、uh, time period, nineteen forty-nine to nineteen fifty-three. Actually, something noteworthy is.、Uh, Between 1949 and 1952, there was a, a very major agricultural reform in China, in which、uh, a lot of our proletariat farmers replaced uh, those uh, farmers with properties in a campaign to own their lands, probably for the first time. With that kind of a freedom,、uh, over the course of two、uh, thousand years, so they were so excited. But just imagine those farmers、uh, with the properties; they suffered a lot. They were in all kinds of,、uh, you know, sufferings,、uh, persecutions, and humiliations. But the thing took a drastic turn in nineteen fifty three. In nineteen fifty three, the state. Changed its policy to make all those、uh, privately owned lands by those、uh, poor farmers who took over just a few years ago again collective. They took the lands back and made them collective again. So in 1953, there was no private land in China for the next、uh, few decades. Things became collective. So, for a very short period of the time in 1949 and 1953, lands were relocated from the farmers with the properties to those、uh, farmers without property. All right, there were a lot of things going on in the middle, but、uh, this is the major background that I want to share with you. All right, let's have a look here.、Uh, this one, this one says. Drive U.S. imperialism invading force out of China. This was created in 1949, probably in the lead up towards the Korean tension. The war broke out in 1950. This is the lead up to the Korean tension, probably the Korean War, but in a tension, and.、Uh, So there, I can see feet of uh, probably uh, Korean. Oh no,、uh, an U.S.、Uh, soldier or merchant kind of thing. And here you can see the broken fetters, chains. This soldier, Chinese soldier, is able to do it、uh, with、uh, a broom. So. Sweeps、uh, all the negativity from Western countries、uh, through a broom. All right. The next one here. It says, 
display the national party. The three youth league and all the reactionary organizations. Yes, you know what? Uh, 1949, China was liberated by the Communist Party. So from the hands of uh, the Republican Party, which is uh, now in Taiwan. Yeah. Ah.、Uh, You can imagine at that time, a lot of people were considered still as、uh, reactionaries. In other words, the leftover force from the Republican Party, or those people who are more inclined to、uh, capitalism or Western countries. So, of course, it was still a very critical period of time in 1949, 1950, early 1950s, for people to be aware of、uh, who. Those are revolutionaries, counter-revolutionaries, were, and、uh, and get rid get rid of them. All right, this、uh, image is very rough in style, very rough in style. It says,、uh, "Welcome, People's、uh, Army." People's Army here refers to the PLA, the People's Liberation Army. This one it says,、uh, "Tibetan people welcome Chinese People's Liberation Army." These are Tibetan monks and Tibetan ordinary people in their traditional garment. There are two portraits: Chairman Mao and Zhu De, the top general. Both of them, I remember when I was a child. Both of them, they appeared on the banknotes issued then. So that currency, I think, was、uh, out of、uh, circulation、uh, later, but still a long time ago. If you you know from now, yeah, it lasted when I was a child for for a few years. Yeah, at that time, both were. On the banknotes, and actually, there were four figures on the banknotes. These two, and the other two were Liu Shaoqi and Zhou Enlai. Four figures. And the latest Chinese、uh, bank notes have only Chairman Mao in it, and this has been the case for years. For years. All right. Next. Where all Tibetans? Why were all Tibetans happy? <laughs> I mean, this is a, a, this is not just a something you can easily say yes or no. And uh, of course, uh, I have to also to say that、um, I just you know in my circumstance, I just not cannot say a lot of uh, uh, things uh, explicitly. I mean,、mm, let's just、uh, keep looking, and、uh, you will figure it out. I mean. It's uh, just uh, like、uh, a lot of things are just like lesson of、uh, humanity. So、uh, it's a process. It's a process, and it's a bit complicated. All right, portraits of、uh, Chairman Mao.、Hmm, this was created in 1949 again, and there is another interesting one. And、uh, this is a、uh, a children's play. It's called "Expose the U.S. Paper Tiger," children play. The children here look very, very aggressive. Just to pay attention to their eyes. So mature again. I have to say, so mature. All right, it's kind of like、uh, children today in China. Parents,、uh, they expect their children to. Be、uh, academically excellent and artistically、uh, outstanding as soon as possible, and better than the rest. The sooner, the better. I mean, I would say Chinese parents today are very anxious, very anxious. They just give、uh, children too much、uh, pressure, and they expect their children to be just、uh, so mature in early age. So there's、uh, you know some connection always, always a、uh, 
a connection. Sometimes not so direct, but there is a, connect, a connection. Yeah, high standards, but you know what? Children, just uh, like any one person, has advantages and disadvantages, and has different personality and has different, uh, you know, capabilities. Uh, I don't think uh, parents should impose too much uh, expectations on children. It's not right. Of course, uh, this is uh, very subtle, and this is only something that uh, you get to know as uh, parents for your own children. There's no one standard, all right? There's no one standard. It's uh, another big topic, so we just uh, skip it, and uh, let's get back to this book again. And uh, here it says... Uh, Happy meeting of army and people. Yes, the army and the people. The soldiers are lovely people in, in China's uh, slogan. And here you can see an interesting thing, scene that is uh, on the stage. There is a, a play in which the two, like landlords or farmers with uh, larger properties, they are in a session of uh, persecution, as you can see. And people, especially this one, is so angry, pointing his finger at this man, and the other man looks so How to say so humiliated by all the group people around him both people on the stage and people under off the stage a lot of things going on Shin said, I like uh, how those years the young ladies wear braids. Yeah, big braids. That's right, big braids. Rough, big braids. Okay, uh, still in the same period. This one was created in 1952. Chairman Mao and Stalin. You know what? Chairman Mao, in his uh, entire life, traveled outside China only twice. And uh, both visits were paid by him to one country. Of course, that was uh, Soviet Union. And the first time he went to visit uh, Stalin was uh, in 1940. Nine. About just one month after the People's Republic of China was founded, on October the 1st, 1949, he went there to visit uh, Joseph Stalin for the first time. And the second visit of uh, Chairman Mao to Soviet Union, I think it was in 1950, 1952 something or 1953. And he went there to visit, uh, he went there to attend the 70th uh, birthday party of uh, Joseph Stalin. So this is what uh, the two visits Chairman Mao paid, uh, both to Russia or then Soviet Union. And this one, long live People's Republic of China. This one. And uh, the next one says, this one here. This one says, it was created in 1949 again. Soviet Union is the stronghold of world peace. You can easily associate it with uh, the present day situation, kind of. But then, Joseph Stalin. 
This is the representation of uh, Western allies with the same uncle here. This image reminds me of uh, maybe uh, uh, the U.S. general. Uh, what's the name of that general? Who is uh, known for smoking this kind of a pipe cigarettes? Yes, MacArthur. That's right, MacArthur. It was uh, just uh, at the tip of my tongue. <laughs> All right. De Gaulle for France. That's right. De Gaulle for France. Right. That yeah, you can you can associate them. All right. So let's turn to next page. You know, I don't think we can finish this book today in one hour. But anyway, we can maybe uh, divide this uh, tour if you are interested into different phases. Uh, this is uh, the next one, and uh, it says 1950, yeah, 1950 parade for founding of People's Republic of China. This is uh, in Shanghai. Again, the Bund architectures, the Bund, and here is the promenade, and there is the river, the Huangpu River. It goes to the Yangtze and to the East China Sea there. Shanghai, uh, I mentioned uh, on other tours uh, a few times that Shanghai was opened by the British in 1953 after the first opium war as a treaty port. This is how Shanghai emerged. Before that, Shanghai was uh, a domestic port and with not much influence at all. These uh, British-style buildings were built in different phases also. Well, the current architecture you get to see on the Bund were majorly built in a period between 1890s to 1930s. Well, the British influence in Shanghai, as I told you, started in 1850s. So there were at least two other generations of British architectures before the architect you get to see today in Shanghai. All right. That's right, John, yes. Uh, it's important point for people who haven't been to Shanghai. So there's the Huangpu River. And uh, this side of uh, Shanghai is called Puxi. It's the major part of Shanghai. It's a huge area, the main part of Shanghai, and also the traditional older part of Shanghai. Well, there is a new land across on the other side of uh, the river. It's called Pudong. Pudong means uh, east of the river. And this river is called Huangpu. Look, Pu. Pu, river, east of the river. And that side is the old part, Puxi, the west part of uh, the river. The east part of the river is a newly developed Shanghai, which began its development in the year 1990, as the decision was uh, made by then Chinese leader Deng Xiaoping to develop Pudong. And at, in old days, Shanghai was a port. There were a lot of piers along the Huangpu River for trade. And actually, there were a lot of uh, people who then in China, they went to Shanghai. A lot of them, they went to Shanghai as refugees, Chinese refugees, because why? In Shanghai, in times of uh, great turmoils, there were French concession, there were the British uh, settlements, and also some other, you know, settlements uh, owned by other countries, but they didn't last very long without much significance. So we are mainly now focused on these two areas. And a lot of people... As I know, my grandfather, he actually originally moved from Jiangsu province in rural Jiangsu province to Shanghai as a, a refugee. And uh, he started with anything without a place for him to live in Shanghai. But then his uh, kind of a first job then in Shanghai was uh, to work as a porter. 
he then worked uh, in some kind of, uh, you know, a one porter somewhere along the Fengpu River. I don't know much about it, but uh, this is what I heard. That's right. Uh, yes. So, uh, sorry. And the uh, Pudong, yeah, the new Shanghai. And there's a front view of Pudong that people can see from this side of the river. It's a very futuristic kind of looking modern uh, architecture of all the skyscrapers in, you know, designed by architects uh, from both China and across the world. All right, let's move on to this one. And uh, this is a parade on Huangpu River. Huangpu River again, the main river of Shanghai, the parade. Parade on the river. This one, 1950. Army parade at founding ceremony of People's Republic of China. Yeah, this is again, the 1949, or maybe the 1950, the second session of uh, the National Day celebration. At that time, I'm not very sure how often they held this kind of a military parade. Then probably, in the first few years, they probably did it quite often. But today, a major military parade is held every uh, 10 years. The last one was held in 19, no, 2019, the last major military parade. The same place the main avenue in front of the Tiananmen Square, the Chang'an Street in Beijing, the capital. Oh, this one is similar to the one we saw on the page on the left. Another river parade on Huangpu River. Dahua Printing Corporation. Probably a Shanghai company. There are a couple of them here on this page. This one says, uh, must teach the war dealers a serious lesson with a serious attack. 1951, during the Korean War. Here, there's a, there are three lines of Chinese characters. It says, the People's Army of uh, Korea, North Korea, and the People's uh, Voluntary Army of China make successive victories. Here, Jie Jie Shen Li, it means uh, make successive victories. Fingers are pointed at the Western Allies. All right. This one, 1951, military aid to U.S. invaders in Korea is too far away and difficult. Yes, this is an this is a disadvantage of uh, the Western Allies for the Korean War. Their logistics, their supply is too far and too difficult. This one, 1951, it says, look down upon US because it is a paper tiger, which can be defeated. Look, a paper tiger with a lot of uh, symbols, including one 
Nazi symbol and a lot of other Chinese characters. It says here, military power isn't enough, referring to the allies. 士气不高 means uh, low morale. Morale is low. And here it says 同盟者不强, it means uh, the allies, I mean the countries uh, who form allies are not strong enough. Something like this. Maybe the logic is uh, if you are strong enough, you don't have to form an ally. Probably this is the logic behind. Anyway, it's uh, just uh, all kinds of uh, ideas are created to discontempt the Western powers as paper tiger. Mainly the US, of course. And uh, here is uh, another very dramatic one. Resist the U.S. and support Korea to save neighbor and ourselves. You know, this one is very telling. In what it says here, resist the U.S. and support Korea to save neighbor and uh, ourselves. This is uh, the idea used by many people uh, in China, not only for the Korean War, but also for the present day war between Russia and Ukraine. The logic is, uh, it's our neighbor. So if uh, there's any threat to our neighbor, it is a threat to us. Therefore, we have to stop it. This is uh, the logic. All right. People all over the world firmly support peace. Soviet Union, the first, China, North Korea, <laughs> uh, Vietnam, which one? Poland, Czech Republic, I don't know. A lot of things have changed. Okay, move on. Long live victory of a Korean People's Army and Chinese People's Army. MacArthur again. <laughs> Without a pipe this time. This one. Chinese people do not win the victory in the country, but the victory against the U.S. invaders. Oh, sorry. Chinese people not only win the victory in the country, but the victory against the U.S. invaders. <laughs> it's quite interesting to just look at the the countenance. This one is uh, 1951. Resist the U.S. and support Korean to defend home hometown and a motherland. Yeah, motherland is uh, an English word. I believe that is a uh, quite characteristic of uh, Chinese. I don't think uh, it's a word you really use. Can you confirm with me? I'm just curious. Motherland is a word Westerners really use, I mean, in their conversations, in their spoken English. Uh, it's a uh, notion, easy for you to understand what it is, but uh, I don't think it is uh, something you use. It's uh, an English word 
characteristic of Chinese? Not really? Not the one plain mask, <laughs> not used in the United States, okay. So it's interesting, it's actually, uh, as I said, this is a Chinese characteristic rice the uh, English word, yeah. Those who have uh, hurt people could not be missed, unpunished by the law. A spy, wow, a spy. This is what's written here. Yes, uh, this is also a common way of uh, humiliation in Chinese uh, uh, at that time. That is, uh, they just put the Chinese characters as symbols. Ang your body, on your head, on your clothes, around you, to mentally, psychologically crush you. Propaganda posters. Actually, have you heard of another thing that is kind of, kind of similar, that is called the big character posters. Big character posters uh, don't have an image. It's just a, a piece of a poster with all the characters, all the information. But it serves the same purpose. Yeah, just let you know. All right, here is uh, this one. Resisting US and supporting Korea for defending family and motherland. Again, motherland. Children, the name of this one is called The East is Red. It's a famous song in China. Strength National Defense, 1951. South China's People's Publishing House. Return with glory from supporting war front. I have uh, tours in which I talk with uh, the old folks in rural China. And I once interviewed uh, a Korean War veteran in our village. And in the second tour, he showed me a lot of uh, medals and prizes he got after he retired from the war. And later he was allocated a, a cadre job to be in the office for years. So you've got honors here now for the contribution in the war. A lot to see. We're in page 17, and this book has uh, 80 some pages, I think. Yes, 84 pages. And uh, all the posters are divided into different periods of time. Okay, this one says a uh, couple plowing fields. Hmm. 1950. As I told you, 1950 was uh, actually the golden age for most of the Chinese farmers because they got their land. They could grow something, give part of it uh, to the state and uh, kept the rest for themselves. But that didn't last very long. All right, but this is something else. Happy with bumper harvest. Sure, bumper harvest. 
There has to be bumper harvest. Nineteen fifty one. At that time, most Chinese people were farmers. Probably something like seven or eight people, or even maybe more than that, out of ten, were farmers in China. Well, today the figure has kind of been upended. The urbanization. Rate in today's China is almost、uh, close to seventy percent in the city, thirty percent in the country, according to the official figures. All right, this one: a mother with、uh, children, and see, this is what you get to see in the front when boys and girls wear a red scarf. I talked about. Future of our motherland. So they look at the promising distance for a bright future of the motherland. And there is a wow. There is a dam, not the Three Gorges Dam, a different dam built. Already built dam, 1953. This one. Is a Chinese、uh, four-character proverb. I said in China, people like to cite uh, those uh, four-character proverbs a lot. And this one, it says "Guo Tai Ming An." In Chinese, it means a stable country with peaceful life.、Hmm. Both those farm paintings are great. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Laurie. Can you show the top painting again, please? The top painting, this one. Laurie, is this one? You want to have a look in again? On the left page. Okay. A couple is plowing their happy land field. Okay. All right. There's one more here on this page, and、uh, do physical exercises to strengthen production. They are doing exercises. You know what? Actually, when I was a student. We usually start our school day by first of all the flag raising ceremony, and it's also followed by an exercise like this, something like this. But of course, when I was a student, the exercise they taught us to do is more modern and more vivid. This one looks a bit, you know, old fashioned. <laughs> Okay. Where are you from again? Okay. Okay. Thank you again, everyone.、Uh, Ion and Margaret. Thanks so much. Do physical exercise to strengthen production. Okay. Well, it has been one hour, so I haven't realized time goes so fast. Uh. Let's have a look at this poster. This one says, "Set up a strong, modernized defense army, 1953." And here you get to see Mao Zedong and、uh, Zhu De, the top general. And here, in the second、uh, tier, you see some other. Major generals.
who led some important、uh, battles in the wars against the、uh, the army of the Republic of China, the Kuomintang, the KMT. They didn't really lead any major wars during the anti-Japanese war because、uh, then the Communist Party was mainly engaged in guerrilla warfare. Yeah, but later in the civil war between the Communist Party and the the KMT Party, they led major battles, and of course they won. This is the Chinese、uh, military flag. It says 八一八 means eight. 一 means one. It suggests the Chinese、uh, Army Day. October the first is Chinese Army Day. This general called Chen Yi. He led the battle to finally. Liberate Shanghai, and after that, he became the first mayor of Shanghai in 1949, because he won the battle here in Shanghai to liberate the city. And this man called Pen Dehuai, he was the chief commander of Chinese、uh, voluntary army in Korean War. Pen Dehuai. And Liu Bochen is not very well known by Westerners, but this man, he injured one of his eyes in earlier battles, so he is、uh, able to see only with one eye. And this is a、uh, Lin Biao. For some years after 1949, he was、uh, the closest、uh, ally of Chairman Mao. And、uh, he was once considered the successor, but later he died in an accident. So you can learn more about what really happened in that accident. The name of this general is called Lin Biao. Children of New China, nineteen fifty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what? Sometimes I don't have to say a word. Just have a look at、uh, the picture. A picture is sometimes、uh, worth a thousand words. Just have a look. This one set up people's navy. Yeah, build people's navy. People's Navy, People's Army, People's Liberation, People's Hall. Okay. All right. This is a one interesting page where you can see three similar or even identical posters. Does it really make sense for to show three identical、uh, posters? Of course not. So they are actually. Different details in these、uh, three. So let's go through it before we finish、uh, today's tour.、Uh, and this is the the moment when Chairman Mao declared, Chinese people are standing up at the founding ceremony of People's Republic of China, 1949, on October the first. So there are other state leaders, of course. And now let's check this too. What's the difference? Pay attention to the rightmost figure in this picture. His name is Gao Gang, and now here he disappears. <laughs> the name of that man is called Gao Gang. So just a.、Uh, Wonder why, right? So the first one here, this was created in 1953. Then three years later, when this one 
was created in 1956, Gaogang at the end of to the right disappears in the second edition. So this is uh, something you can learn more about if you are interested in. And uh, now let's compare the second one with the third one. Now let's pay attention to this figure in the middle here. And uh, his name is Liu Shaoqi. The figure that I mentioned, who when I was a child appeared on the, the Chinese uh, banknote, together with Chairman Mao, Zhu De, and uh, Zhou Enlai. And his name is uh, Liu Shaoqi. Liu Shaoqi, second to the left, disappears in this third edition. Now you can find him. And I actually know what Liu Shaoqi, different from Gao Gang, the first man who disappears. Liu Shaoqi, he was once the Chinese chairman, believe it or not. For a short period of the time, Chairman Mao took the second fiddle when Liu Shaoqi was in command of China as the as the chairman, but not as the secretary general, but as the chairman for a short period of time. And later, during the Cultural Revolution, something miserable happened uh, to Liu Shaoqi. So this is also something I'm going to leave to you for you to learn more about if you're interested in. All right? Liu Shaoqi. So before we really finish today's tour, just have a look at uh, this one, uh, there were a few ones here, but uh, let's pay attention to this one because this one includes uh, world people's leaders from different countries. Uh, let me just uh, let you know, because uh, the caption here is very little. There's no way for you to read. And of course they are in Chinese. And uh, But let me point out, you know, what countries these uh, people's leaders really uh, represented at that time, all right? 1953, from the second tier. France. Germany. Vietnam, of course, North Korea, Czech, this one, the characters are too little, I can't recognize now, and I don't remember, pardon me, this one, all right, this one is the US, the name of this person in Chinese, uh, according to a phonetic translation, is a uh, Fuster. Well, in English, it's a uh, Foster. He was once the General Secretary of uh, the Communist Party in the US. So, if you're interested in 1953, Foster. Italy, let me skip this one. Italy, Hungary, Bulgaria. Romania, Spain, a woman called uh, Iba Luli, Ibaruri in English, Ibaruri, something like this, yeah. Uh, Japan, Albania, uh, and the UK, the UK. John Foster Dulles? No, not any, not that one. No. Foster here, he was, uh, you know, John Foster Dulles, as I know, he was uh, uh, the Secretary of State, and he was uh, totally on a different line. Yeah. Well, this Foster, you can learn more about it, about him. And uh, he was uh, in 1953, maybe he started as a, at that post in as early as the late 1940s. He was the General, uh, he was the Secretary General of the 
Community Party in the USA. So you can learn more about it, Foster, a different Foster. And also pay attention to his uh, image. You can verify on the internet if you're interested in that. Okay, guys, uh, there are still a lot to see. And uh, here is the second period, 1954 to 1956. Uh, then we have to come back uh, in a future chance to see more. Uh, and all the way to look 1957, 1962 for a few pages and uh, just, uh, you know, different uh, time periods. The last period here on record is 1977 to 1979. But interestingly, there is no image of uh, Deng Xiaoping, right? Because uh, this is the period of the time that belongs to Deng Xiaoping but there is no image of him. It's uh, very interesting. All right, but anyway, if you're interested, let's come back next time to see more. Uh, all right, this is uh, the book, Chinese uh, Propaganda Poster, Catalog 2011. This is uh, the other side. Please do part two at uh, Letter date, thanks. <laughs> then story would be interesting as well. All right. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your favor and interests and your company. Hope I have uh, shown you something interesting and something you can learn from in the past one hour. Uh, I really like the idea that is uh, the harder, the better. Yeah, so I just want to share with you that before I finish. So guys, uh, for you to have a good night, have a good day ahead. Until next time, bye for now.